Oh, on the other side of this thing. Yeah. I hereby call the special joint convention of the City Council, Mayor Rodriguez, and the School Committee to order it being 6.30 p.m. August 5, 2019. Please stand and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If people could still stand, Mayor Rodriguez would like to take a moment of silence. In regards to those that lost their lives in El Paso, Texas, and Ohio yesterday, if we could just take a moment and remember those souls. Our thoughts and prayers to them and their family. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. President. Consigliere. If I might, I think it's only appropriate that we also uh, take a moment of silence for our health uh, executive director who passed away last week, Mr. Lou Tattagler, and he had his burial in, on Friday, and I think it's only appropriate that we uh, do the same. Absolutely, Councilor. Our thoughts and thank prayers you. to the Tataglia family, gentlemen and a public servant to say the least. So thank, thank you, you Council. That being said, I do want to recognize uh, our colleagues from the school committee. Thank you for being here tonight and colleagues on the city council, of course, Mayor Rodriguez and the city clerk, Mr. Zioli, legislative council, attorney Shannon Resnick, and those here in attendance and watching on TV. With that being said, um, we're gonna ask the clerk, please, it's the call of the meeting. We have the call of the meeting. That's accepted and placed on file. A sheet of the meeting notice via email. That too is accepted and placed on file. Call, <coughs> excuse me. The call of the meeting will be in accordance with section 36 of the city charter. The city council of the school committee shall meet in joint convention to fill the vacancy in Ward 2 school committee office to fill the unexpired, unexpired term <coughs> of Lisa Plant. Uh, Mr. Clerk, I'd like to uh, designate the uh, council president to, um, to preside over these meetings if, if, without objection. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Colleagues, I need to read at this time uh, the notice uh, that was duly noticed, if I could, notice of the meeting. Notice is hereby given that there will be a special joint meeting of the city council and the school committee on August 5th, 20, uh, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. in the council chamber, second floor at City Hall. 45 School Street here in the city of Brockton, 02301. The subjects to be acted upon are as follows. Number one, and that's the issue before us right now, in accordance with section 36 of the city charter, the, the city council and school committee shall meet in joint convention to fill the vacancy in Ward 2 school committee to fill the unexpired term. All interested persons who desire to be considered by the joint convention of the Brockton City Council and the Brockton School <coughs> Committee to fill the vac vacant position of Ward 2 School Committee member, submit to the City of Brockton, Office of the City Clerk, 45 School Street, Brockton, Mass, 02301, no later than 4 p.m. August 1, 2019. A letter of interest, together with a resume, as to the applicant's background and qualifications. Kindly note that any person applying for the vacant position of Ward 2 School Committee member shall be at least 18 years of age, prepared to complete the remaining school committee term, and a City of Brockton resident of Ward 2. In addition, any qualified applicant whose submission is filed as described above may choose to attend and be provided three minutes to speak before the joint convention before the Brockton City Council and Brockton School Committee for, purpose, for the purpose of filling the above vacancy, which is scheduled to take place at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, August 5, 2019, Brockton City Hall, 45 School Street, Brockton, Mass. 02301, within the Brockton City Council Chambers. Councilors and School Committee, there was a process agreed upon by attorney uh, Tom Minicello, myself, Tom, of course, uh, from Ward 1, Vice Chair of the School Committee, and myself, Robert Sullivan, Councilor Lodge, and the Council President. It's based on a legal opinion established at a previous meeting of a joint committee to fill the vacancy of a school committee member. Vice Chairman of the School Committee, Mr. Minicello, stated that the candidates must be a registered voter and a resident of Ward 2, which was duly noticed. The Council President will ask for a motion to file a slate of candidates, and it needs to be seconded under Robert's rules. The candidate will be allowed to present themselves. Each candidate will have two minutes to address the committee. Each committee member can ask each candidate one question if they have one. Each candidate will have one minute to answer said question. The city clerk's office has not received any requests from interested candidates other than those presented to the committee. And I'll list those. 
Candidate number one, Mr. Richard Bath. Candidate number two, Juanita Timpson Brown. Council President will call for the first ballot. If more than two candidates, it will go to a second ballot of the two highest voted candidates. The first ballot would decrease the candidates to two. If two or less candidates, the first ballot will select the candidates to fill the position. And colleagues, that's what would happen here since we only have two people that have been duly noticed. Will the clerk kindly? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <coughs> At this time, if we could kindly present and detain motions relative to the two individuals. Mr. Richard Bath and Juanita Timpson Brown. Make a motion to nominate the two. Second. So motion on the floor was properly seconded to nominate the two people as stated. All in favor of those nominations, please raise your hand. All opposed. Will the nominations your... be closed? Second. Second. Those two nominations were duly noticed. Now there's a motion properly seconded to close said. All in favor of closing, please raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. That it's legally and lawfully closed. Now this uh, this comes before us the two named individuals, Mr. Bath and Ms. Timpson Brown. And uh, will the clerk kindly read the role of all elected officials here in the chamber that will be voting? Yes, thank you, Mr. Clerk. When your name is called, kindly mention the candidate that you're supporting to cast a vote. It would either be Mr. Mr. Uh, Bath or Ms. Timpson Brown. And we'll, we'll have the clerk calculate based on the name stated by the individual person. Mr. Counselor. President, um, can I, I make a motion for a reverse ro roll call vote, please? There's a motion made. Is there a second on that? Second. Sure. There's a motion made, properly seconded for a reverse roll call. All in favor of a reverse roll call? If you're in favor of a reverse roll call, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It passes. A reverse roll call, please. Timothy Sullivan? Yes. Here. You need that. What do you need? At this, what, what Councilor Isaac has asked that we go from the bottom of the alphabet of elected officials to the top. Oh, okay. uh, so at this time, Mr. Sullivan, uh, his name, and you have the ability to state who you'd like to vote for at this time. So one of the two. I'd like to vote for Richard Bath. Robert Sullivan. Uh, Richard Bath. Judy Sullivan. Richard Bath. Rodriguez? You can cast you can't vote. Vote. Yeah. Uh, Timson Brown. What? McCastro? Timson Brown. Monahan? Richard Bath. Minichillo? Minichello. Minichello. Richard Bath. Lally? Richard Bath. Gormley? Richard Bath. Farwell? Richard Bath. Ian Airy? Richard Bath. Drain Court? Richard Bath. D'Agostino? Richard Bath. Cruz? Richard Bath. Beauregard? Timson Brown. Shirley Asak? Richard Bath. Joyce Asak? Richard Bath. Madam Clerk, That's calculations. 14 for Richard Bath and 3 for Timson Thank Brown. You. So, first of all, on behalf of the City Council and the School Committee, I want to thank Mr. Bath and Ms. Timpson Brown for going through the process. Uh, we, we applaud you for doing that. It's, it's a great thing for the City of Brockton. Um, the votes have been cast. It's a 14 in favor of Mr. Bath, 3 in favor of Ms. Timpson Brown. So at this time, Mr. Bath uh, has been duly elected among the Special Joint Committee, and he will serve the unexpired term for the War II School Committee. Any questions? Are there any questions at all, councillors or school committee members or Mr. Mayor? Really? No. no. Yep. Uh, I'd like to thank at this time the joint committee, it's specifically Ward 1 school committee member, Attorney Tom Minicello, vice chair of the school committee. Uh, Tom has, has worked diligently on behalf of, of this endeavor. I want to I wanna publicly thank you, Tom, for what you've done on this. So, councils and school committee members, Mr. Mayor, at this time, this, this special meeting relative mm. to the joint convention of the school committee and the city council is hereby adjourned. And then after a brief recess, uh, city councils will be coming back into session for a special city council meeting. 
Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Of the City Council, we're back in order now. Uh, and councillors, uh, even though we're in a City Council meeting, uh, I'm going to waive standing. You need not stand tonight, councillors, under, under the protocol. You can sit in your seats and we'll just go through the process. I think it'll make it easier. Thank you for everybody for being here tonight as well. Um, with that being said, uh, the call of the meeting. We have the call of the meeting. Oh. That's accepted and placed on file, Mr. Clerk. We said the receipt of meeting notice sent by email. That too is accepted and placed on file, Mr. Clerk. Okay. Councillors, uh, first of all, thank you for what we just did relative to the school committee and the ward two. Um, but now we have, uh, we're charged um, under mass <coughs> general law. So I'm gonna read the notice, councillors, and the purpose is the election of a city councilor at large to fill the remainder of the unexpired term of councilor at large, now Mayor Moises Rodriguez, due to his election to serve the unexpired term of the deceased Mayor Bill Carpenter as mayor. That being said, Council, proper notice is hereby given uh, in accordance with Mass General Law, which is Chapter 43, Section 59A. The City Council shall meet and vote to fill the unexpired term of Council at large position. All interested parties may submit a resume or letter of interest to the City Clerk's Office, 45 School Street, here at City Hall, Brockton, Mass. 02301, and attend the meeting. All candidates must reside in the City of Brockton and be a registered voter. The pub public, of course, is welcome. Councilors, the way we're going to do it, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine individuals, and thank those nine individuals that, uh, that have uh, shown some interest in this. Uh, we are going to uh, go through the process, have each individual, I'm going to name them, duly noticed into the record by, uh, by the clerk. Uh, those individuals are able to come before us uh, and, and talk to us, and we can ask questions, okay, councilors? It's going to be limited to three minutes in scope. Um, after we have all the individuals that choose to come up, you're not forced to come up, you're not required to come up, but if you want to come up, please do. Uh, after that, uh, we're going to ask for uh, a nomination relative to much like we just did uh, with, with <clears throat> Mayor Rodriguez. There'll be a nomination that needs to be a proper second for purposes of filling the unexpired term of the council at large. Um, there can be one, more than one person nominated, and if that happens, in the event there are more than two candidates, there will be two ballots. The council president myself will allow the candidates to present themselves. Each candidate will have two minutes, uh, two or three minutes, to address the council. Each council member uh, can ask each candidate one question if they have one, and each candidate will have one minute to answer said question. The individuals that have applied for um, consideration are as follows. Mr. Jeff uh, Chardell, uh, Ms. Lisa Campanella Crowley, Mr. Scott DaCosta, Mr. Bernie Hassan, Mr. John McGeary, uh, Attorney D. Sean Noonan, Mr. Ollie Spears, Mr. David Silvestri, and Ms. Joanne Zygmunt. Those are the individuals. Uh, if there's no objection, counselors, uh, we could ask those parties that I just stated to come up in the <coughs> order. Any objection to that? No. <laughs> Just Thank you, Council. <laughs> Welcome on the paying attention. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, that takes care of that. The only one that's not afraid of democracy. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Charnell. Oh God. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Do you have a statement for the council? Um, the statement that I've prepared is that, you know, the city obviously have to fill a void. Moses was elected, uh, sent as mayor. And I'd just really like to just show my support as a volunteer, a longtime volunteer in the city um, to, you know, step in if needed. Um, so that's essentially why I'm here today. Thank you so much, sir. Any questions for Mr. Charnell? Ms. Borogat, attorney, uh, Council Just Borogat. to let the record show as a whole here, okay, because I will remind some of my colleagues that we had someone come up in front of us. 
one time that, of course, did not live in Brockton, implying basically that we were uneducated and unskilled. And in fact, if people saw the remarkable resumes of the individuals that have applied this evening, it is a demonstration of the massive mis information that goes out about such a remarkable community. And Jeffrey here is an example of that. I, I have dealt with him on license, and I have dealt with him with uh, the zoning. This is a gentleman that displays uh, a, a knowledge and effort, and he's out in the community, and he's also active in other areas, and that's important, and that's just a demonstration of what the future of Broughton looks like, so this is pretty impressive. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any, any questions for the individual? Seeing none, thank you, Mr. Charnell. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next um, applicant is uh, Ms. Lisa Campanella Crowley. Good evening. Good evening. I may have to lower that a little bit. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Lisa Crowley, and I would like your vote to be the next interim city councilor at large. I moved to Brockton in 2005 after falling in love with my house that is built in 1776. Since then, I've fallen in love with Brockton and the people that I've met and the kids that I have coached and the people that I've worked with in the community. Um, I've been a soccer coach for Brockton Youth Soccer for quite a few years now. I took a little hiatus. Same with the Brockton Garden Club. So I understand the issues that are going on. Um, I also think I'm the best candidate for this position. I was a reporter covering the South Shore for the Patriot Ledger and as a freelancer for the Boston Globe and the Stoughton Journal and the Mariner um, since 1992, basically off and on. I've discussed everything you have discussed with people, everybody in the community, whether it's one person, there's more than two sides to a story. There's usually about 15 or 20, and they called me. And I fielded those calls, and I wrote those stories, so I understand it very well. Um, right along with economic development and reconstruction, um, dear to my heart is this sports complex that's coming into my, my neighborhood. I live at 250 Howard Street. I would love to see that come in, but I want to see it done right. I think Jack and I have talked about that. Jack and I go back to my Whitman Hansen days. His grandfather was my first referee. I coached, uh, I coached and played, and um, I also refereed soccer. So it was nice to see his granddad um, at that soccer meeting. Um, also, I think we really need to look at um, the marijuana, marijuana money, how we're going to spend that. <clears throat> Moses is talking about $1.5 million for turf soccer, uh, turf fields. Definitely in favor of that. Maybe we can also try and get some foundation money from somewhere to maybe offset that. But how we want to spend, that's going to be a little bit of a windfall before it gets absorbed into salaries and personnel and equipment. If we could do something great for the city that we'll all remember and play on, and if you've got other ideas, that's great. So I'm just a new voice, new eyes. Um, and this interim position would be perfect. And um, I thank you for your time, and I look forward to your decision and questions. We thank you. And are there any questions, Ms. Crowley? No. Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. If we could go on to the next individual, Mr. Scott DeCosta, please. <clears throat> Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for your consideration. My name is Scott DeCosta. I was born in Brockton. I won't say what year. Uh, lived here my entire life, all over the city. Met my wife in Brockton High. Raised our family here. The city has <coughs> been tremendous. It's been great to us. So when I saw this opportunity to maybe step in and fill a void and give something back, I thought I would be well suited for it. Um, Thank you. That's basically it. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. DeCosta, Councilors? Seeing none, thank you again, sir. Thank you. We'll go on to the next individual, please. Mr. Bernie Hassan, please. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Bernie Hassan. Um, I was uh, born here in the city. I've uh, run a real estate company that serviced the city since 1991. I've spent a couple of terms on the uh, Water Commission. Um, part of uh, my job managing and operating a real estate company is I move over 300 families a year, many of them here in the city. Uh, a lot of my work is problem solving. Uh, requires a lot of teamwork, which I'm a team player. Uh, I show up and get the job done. I'm uh, also the regional uh, president of uh, the Northern New England Re region for Wycott Realtors. There's 25 of these across the country. We make decisions on billions of dollars of uh, investment with regard to media advertising for over 20,000, 25,000 agents across the country and all the families that we move. Um, 
my reason for doing this is probably similar to everybody else's. I feel some community service. I felt that before. I've demonstrated that before in my volunteering for the Water Commission, and I'd be uh, more than happy to assist this uh, chamber in moving the city forward in an interim basis only. I am not running for office. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Hassan, councillors? Seeing none, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Next individual is Mr. John McGeary, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and councillors. When I heard of the opening, I sat back and I thought, this would be a good time for me to give back to my city even a little bit more. After retiring from 10 years as a councillor, 18 years as a department head, I felt that I still had something I could give back to my community that uh, I have loved for all my life. I'm here tonight because I think I can help for the five months that are open. I know the ordinances, I, I know the process, I'm intimately familiar with the budget processing. Uh, I can provide uh, uh, constituent services. I know the department heads, when a problem comes up, I know who to contact. I think that I would be an asset to this board for the next five months and as uh, if you don't know, I have no desire to seek any kind of further office, and I <laughs> just want to provide some service to the to the city I love. Thank you, Mr. Thank McGarry. You. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. McGarry, councilors? Seeing none, thank you, Mr. McGarry. Thank you. Councilors. Next individual, um, Mr. D. Sean Noonan. Good evening, sir. Good evening, councilors. Thank you for having me. Can I just start by saying the, I want to tell you the reason why I wanted to put in my application and cover letter. And that is because I read an article in the Brockton Enterprise, and the article said from Tony Zioli himself, saying, we encourage the city, we want to open this up to somebody who wants to serve the city, and service is the key thing here. And I was very inspired by his words. He said, we want to show this. We want someone to get involved with the city and do some of the things, the issues that are dealing with the city, and open it up for a citizen to come forward and do this. And I was inspired by that article, so inspired that I thought maybe that this would be something I want to do. And the key here is I want to serve. Um, I am not interested in running for election for anything. I am barely winning my, my race for vice president of my own house. Um, but I would, I would tell the members here, you have a unique opportunity, no matter who you pick, and I've heard, I've been blown away by how great the other candidates are, so whoever, I don't think there's a wrong decision here. But I would tell you of a rare opportunity because you are gonna have someone, a man or woman, who's gonna sit here as a city councilor who is not going to be concerned about re-election, is not gonna be concerned about raising money for their re-election, is not gonna be beholden to any any special interest, any other people. This is a person who's gonna be sitting here, and I would like to think that if I were the one chosen to do it, we will sit here and the, with every issue, we will ask one question and one question only, and that will be, how does this help the city of Brockton? So this is one of the first times in history you're gonna have somebody sitting on the city council who has nothing but no, uh, no agenda other than what is the best interest of the city of Brockton. I think that's great. Now, as far a little bit about me, I have served in different capacities with the city in an administrative level. Um, I was a hearing officer for the city of Brockton. I think you've all seen the resume. I have extras if you need it. But I did uh, that for a number of years. I worked with Lou Tartaglia, oddly enough, uh, when he was with the Board of Health, with the Trajano hearings, uh, and with a couple of other things. When Mayor, uh, when Mayor Balzotti was uh, present, she had me as the head of the um, commission looking into the liquor license on whether it should be rolled back to 2 o'clock. So I worked on that I was also on the zoning board and I can tell you I've had experience with uh, I've had exposure to two people who I think are some of the finest civil servants in the city's history and one is Lou Tartagler and the other one is Kenny Galligan I served on the zoning board for six years under three different mayors and that man taught me everything I know about zoning he would go to every site and he would evaluate every site, he would ask questions of everyone, so I went to every site because that's the way you're supposed to do it. Whatever the issues are, I would research them, I would talk to the powers that be and get the pro and cons of each one and, and I would try to serve the city as best I can. So I appreciate your support, I'm sorry I'm so long-winded, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Noonan. Councils, any questions for Attorney Noonan? Any questions? Thank, Thank you, Thank you for sir. your time, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Next individual, please, Mr. Ollie Spears. Mr. Spears, please. Thank you. Good evening, councilors, president, my family, friends, supporters. Uh, my name is Ollie Spears. Those that don't know me, 
I've been in the city since 1975, the year I was born, March 1st. Brockton is me, I am Brockton, and I'm here to serve Brockton, how, I, how I've been serving for the past three decades. I started when I was 14 years old with my mother in Hill Street, probably earlier than that, but I'll go 14 years old. But Hill Street Housing Development, where my mother was the president of Hill Street um, Tenant Association, where we did many things in the community where we, well, you guys know what about Hill Street in the 80s. So where it was a dark place, my mother tried to make it a, a light and I try to make it a light with my mother. And I get my, my service from my mother where, where I love Brockton as much as you guys love Brockton, but I think I love it a little bit more. <laughs> but I think I'm a great candidate. I've been on several boards. I've been on the, the traffic commission. I've been on the planning board. I've been on the homeless task force um, that Mayor Carpenter put me on. I also serve on several um, nonprofits in the city. Um, I just finished up Saturday with a little under 300 children that for the whole summer with elite basketball, where we had a place for, for them to come Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays to play basketball. So, like I said, I'm brought in. I'm the best man for the job, I believe, and I hope you consider me. And thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Spears. <laughs> Councilors. Councilors, any question for Mr. Spears? Councilors? We'll go on to the next. Thank you, Mr. Spears. We'll go on to the next, please. Next. Mr. David Silvestri, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members. Uh, as you know, my name is David Silvestri. When I first moved here from Rhode Island, which was several years ago, I fell in love with this city, and I have been involved in it since then. I'm a member of the Board of Trustees for the Wald Memorial Building. I'm part of the Stuart and Beamer team that I work closely with Steve Hook for. And as far as I've been managing Prava for two years now, so I'm out with the people. I talk a lot to the people that, that talk to me in any place I'm at, and I just love this city, and I think I can contribute with the background I have in my man managing jobs and financial jobs, that I would be a good asset to this council. Um, Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Councilors, any questions for Mr. Silvestri? Councilors, any questions? Thank you, sir. The last uh, applicant is Ms. Joanne Zygmont. Ms. Zygmont, please. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Hello, counselors. Thank you for your time and attention this evening. My name is Joanne Zygmunt, and I've put my name forward for interim counselor at large because I believe that I have the education, the experience, and also the, the demonstrated love of the city that's required to really do a good job as a city counselor. Um, as you can see in my resume, my educational background is pretty solid. Um, I have an undergrad degree, a bachelor's in political science, and a master's in urban development and planning. Probably about 75% of the issues that you guys deal with kind of fall into to one of those two categories. Um, for the past 13 years now, I have worked across the startup, nonprofit, and for profit sectors on um, nonprofit management and business development. I currently run my own consultancy that focuses on environmental sustainability, but also community capacity building. Um, Part of the reason why I put my name forward is because I am self-employed, I am able to set my own schedule and my own hours, so I'll be able to put the time and attention into my role as counselor at large. That's really needed. I know you guys do a lot of work, and I know it's heavy lifting. I'm totally prepared for that. Um, and in terms of my, um, I don't really want to call it community service because I, I love it so much, and if you love what you do, you don't really feel like it's anything but something that you love to do. Um, co-founder and president of the newly formed Village Neighborhood Association, which formed last year. For anybody watching on TV, if you're in um, the McKinley Park, um, Tukas area, come join us. You can find more on Facebook. Um, also, I am a commissioner on the Central Plymouth County Water District Commission. Um, and through my experience on that, I'm familiar with you know, Robert's rules as well as open meeting law. Um, and uh, I'm involved in various other activities in the city, including uh, many of you have seen the uh, community cookbook that the NAACP put up. Um, I was one of two or three, or actually many people who are part of that initiative. Um, so yeah, so, so that's me in a nutshell. Um, thank you. Thank you. 
Councilors, any questions for Ms. Zygmunt? Any question, councils? Thank you very much. Thank you. And again, on behalf of the council, I want to thank uh, <clears throat> personally and on behalf of the council, all nine individuals. Uh, it's a scary thing to come before, uh, but your resumes, as Council Borg, I said, your resume speaks volumes, so thank you. Thank you going through the process. Uh, relative to the procedure here, councilors, we can do it two different ways. I just confirmed with the clerk and our attorney. We can uh, entertain nominations of individual named parties, or you could entertain a nomination of a slate, which would be all nine um, individuals, and at that time we could take vote. It will be a roll call vote, much like we just did. Uh, when your name is read, you will state the name. So it's really the will of the council uh, how you want to do it. If you want to do individual nominations, we could do that, or if you wanted to do a slate, we could do that as well. A motion to do a slate nomination. Second. So there's a motion on the floor, it was properly seconded, to do a slate, which would mean all nine individuals would be on the slate for voting purposes. If you're in favor of that, I, I, council, I, I, on the motion. motion. Just a, a question. Given the fact that there could be so many split votes, what would the next procedure be in terms of dropping a candidate and proceeding just to the remainder of the slate? Personally, I would prefer a motion to nominate in a second and then having people speak on whatever they're offering for a motion, but, but there has to be now, if we're going to go with a slate, a subsidiary uh, set of regulations as to how we would proceed. You'd go on. <clears throat> you would vote on the first ballot and the two highest vote getters would be placed on the second ballot. Okay. And the highest vote getter out of the two would be the candidate that would fill the unexpired term of the council at large. Well, okay. Again, on the motion, colleagues, I, it's, just, it's just my preference. I think as we conduct business, we should nominate, have a second, and then individual councilors should be able to offer their comments. Constance, there is a motion uh, on the floor, and it was properly second relative to a slate. Do you want to remove that and concur with Councillor Fowell, or do you want to move forward? I want to move forward. I want to second that. Okay. I want to move forward. Duly noted. There is a motion that was properly second to take a slate, which would mean all nine individuals would be voted on. Uh, all in favor of the slate? Is there uh, a motion? On the motion, just, I just want to make sure I understand. So the, we will only be going to a third ballot. The top two vote getters will move to a second ballot, and that's it. Okay, I just want to make sure I understand. I'll just read one more time into the record, councils. In the event that there are more than two candidates, which obviously this is the case, there will be two ballots. Council President will allow the candidates to present themselves. We've already done that. Uh, each candidate will have uh, two or three minutes to address the council. Each council member can ask questions, which we did, and each candidate will have one minute to answer the question. Um, just duly note this as well, Council. The City Clerk Office did not receive any other requests from interested candidates other than the nine individuals that did present to themselves. So um, we, would, we would call the ballot. Uh, just for, for, for procedure standpoint, we would call the ballot okay. uh, relative to the slate. That means all, all nine individuals are on the ballot. And at that time, uh, we'd take a roll call vote, and you would name off who you choose to, to cast for ballot number one for the first round. As the clerk said, top two vote getters would move on to the second round, and we'd have to do the same process as well for the second round. Okay. Thank you. Simple enough. Councilor? Just further on the motion, I just do want to take a second, and I think Councilor Beauregard has kind of already said this because we won't get a chance to speak. Um, no matter who comes out of this group, this is an impressive group of people. And mm -hmm. I hope that they don't stop tonight in the next year or two years from now. I hope to see most of these people up here uh, again, getting themselves on the ballot because. I personally know seven of the nine. I didn't know a couple beforehand, but it, no matter who it is, I'll be proud to serve with them. And I think it's important that whoever it is tonight that moves forward, the other eight didn't lose. They just didn't move forward. So I hope all of you stay active and become part of the process. Most of you are already anyways, but I hope you keep going on that because that's what makes Brockton a great place to be. And, uh, and we'll keep it that way. So I just want to say that because we won't get really a chance to now. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Right. Mr. President, just a, one more point of order, if I Council could. Fowell, please. With the, with the slate, then no comments are offered about anyone. We just proceed to voting, and the top two vote getters prevail, and then they go on to a final ballot. Is that correct? That's, that's, that is correct. It, unless the council, again, with 10 members right now, if you want to talk about an individual as the president, I'll, I'll give you that ability to do so. It's up to, it's up to you. But I mean, in terms of 
what we just voted on relative to a slate. All nine individuals that did a great job before us uh, are candidates for this position, and then we would entertain motions relative to that. Well, I, I concur with my colleague from Ward 1 about the quality of the people who have applied, but I always like to explain why I do what I do and why I might support mm -hmm. a candidate. Uh, there's nothing negative to say about any of the candidates, but that's just important to me. But if, if that is As not President of the Council, I'm going to allow, when your name is read off and you want to name the individual that you're supporting for round one, by all means, Council, so we all serve you know, the city and we're elected duly, by all means, Council, you can do that. Thank you. Not mandated, but you can, Council Nacastro, fall by Council Darrancourt, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to say that I spoke to, I called every one of the nine candidates between yesterday and today. I spoke to all but one of them. I asked questions. We had very interesting discussions in all instances. And I want to thank everyone for caring enough to apply. Um, this is really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lodge, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Um, personally, I would like to thank uh, each and every single one of you, actually, to having the courage to come forward, especially in, in this moment to put your name on the ballot in regard to serving that time, and also the people that actually take the time to come here. Because um, although recently we faced a very unfortunate situation, but somewhat by now I can see that we do have amazing and excellent people in our city. So the vote we are about to cast is not really a reflection on you guys, because obviously one of you will get the job. But in regard to the other eight, I just want you to understand that, you know, continue serving, continue doing what you're doing because we desperately need you in this city. Because what happened is that it takes folk like you to actually come forward to make sure that us can do our job and the people out there can see that Brockton does have potential. With that being said, I would like to thank you and also congratulate you for actually having the courage to put your name on something like that to serve the resident of Brockton. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Councillor. Any other councillors want to say anything right now? Seeing none, we're going to move on to the process. Madam Clerk, kindly read the oh, roll. Mr. President. Counselor. Reverse. Um, a reverse roll call vote, please. Second. The, excuse me. Yes. Is that the form of a motion? In the form of a motion. Is that a second on the motion? Yes. yes. Thank you, Counselor. We have a motion that was made. It was duly, properly seconded to what? do a reverse roll call. In favor, raise your hand. All opposed, raise your hand. It carries. Madam Clerk, please read the roll. Sullivan. Well, what I want to say is thank you. Honest to God, thank you. Thank you for going through this process. Um, and again, um, unfortunately, with the untimely passing of Mayor Carpenter, um, that's what triggered this process. And I do want to thank Mayor Rodriguez, who stayed here uh, and is here tonight. Um, Moses is an excellent counselor at large. Excellent. Seven Woods, 28 precincts. So whoever does fill his spot for the unexpired term has big shoes to fill. But everybody that spoke, yeah, absolutely. But this is a good day for Brockton, the people yes. that stepped yes. up, that are very, very interested in civic duty, and this is what makes us the City of Champions. So I do want to thank each and every one of you. Now, for my own vote, uh, I don't want to disappoint anybody because I'm friends with most of you, but what I've done on my due diligence and my research, and I've read everybody's resume, and it blows me away, but what I need to think about for myself personally, just as one of 11 councils, is who do I think has the experience relative to Robert's rules um, and I have to cast a vote to John McGeary, and I'll tell you why. Uh, he was uh, a Ward 3 councillor for 10 plus years, and then he would come here every budget cycle because he was the elections commissioner for 18. That's not a knock on anybody else because I, I honest to God, know each and every one of you, and I hope to God you all run again for office. I know Ollie will be. Um, but again, from the, from, no, and that's great, and that's what it's about, but from the bottom of my heart, that's why I'm casting my ballot for Mr. McGeary tonight. And again, that's mine, if you could duly note that. Thank you for everybody's time tonight. Nicastro? Um, I'm voting for John McGeary. Monaghan? Uh, John McGeary. Lally? Uh, I just want to say, uh, I, you know, I know it's already been said, you know, I'm sort of repeating here, but I am I'm very excited to see that so many people have come out uh, it's a point of pride. I would like to note to my fellow councillors that three of the nine candidates are from Ward 6. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it is very tough because I, I do know a lot of you. I know, I know the people from my ward and the people from the city. Um, it, is, it is very tough and it is something we have to weigh. 
Uh, but like Councillor Sullivan said, it's it's five months. We need someone who's got the you know who already who already knows knows what the what the council is to a better extent than than even I do. Uh, you know, considering time served. So I will uh, cast my vote for John McGarry. Farwell. Mr. President, Council, of course, I, I'm going to cast my vote for Ollie Spears, and I'm going to take a minute to maybe give everyone a little history lesson. That's Council. It was about 26 years ago that I was sitting in the East Room of the White House, and that's the room where they present medals of honor to people. And that's the room you see on television with the rather brilliant gold drapes. And I was there because a group of young people from public housing in Brockton formed a group called Our Positive Posse. And it was a group of people who felt that they could make a difference in this city by pulling together some people who could get along, who could do some outreach, who could maybe make a difference and broker maybe some peace between individuals or groups that might have a problem. And I nominated that group for a Presidential Point of Light Foundation Award, and they won. Yeah. And we went down to the White House, and I remember sitting there, they announced the President, and watched President Clinton. He presents the award to our positive posse. You get the chance to chat with the President. He, he's not one of those who hurries along and wants to move through the line. He genuinely likes to talk with you. And I left there struck by the fact that Ollie Spears was part of that group. Ollie Spears gave his time. He just said he was born in 1975. This would have been in about 1993, so he was 18 years old. He took the time to do something for this community. And I don't think we've been recognized by the White House or the President <clears throat> since. I may be wrong, <laughs> but I don't think we have. So now let's look at the intervening years. What has he done? Well, he's there every Thanksgiving for meals for people who can't afford it or who can't do their own meals. He's there for sports activities for young people. He's there for toys for Christmas, and he's out there in front of Walmart in the cold with Rosie and a few others. He walks the walk and talks the talk. It isn't that anybody else that applied doesn't do the same thing. But in my judgment, this man is remarkable. Now, you know most of you, I suck at politics. So I'm not doing this for any pressure group. I'm not doing this because there are a few people here for Ollie. I'm doing it because he deserves it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Ian Erie. Thank you. And Mr. President, I'd just like to um, make a couple of quick comments you as, may, as well. Thank you. you. Um, uh, as, as everybody refers to me as the Dean of the Council, and that is correct. It's my 16th year here and had many years of service as a member of the Brockton School Committee as well. I think this is the first time in the um, 16 years that I've been here as a member of the Council that we've gone through this particular process in electing uh, somebody to fill a vacant spot. Uh, on the City Council. Um, I want to commend all of those candidates that have come before us this evening and commend you for the participation that you've had in this process because it's not too often when something like this does occur. It happened to occur and we need to fill a, a void and we're working towards doing that this evening. I will say to you that um, my vote is going to go with um, Councilor John McGarry, because I've known Councilor McGarry for a long, long time, even when I was still on the uh, Brockton School Committee, and, and uh, he was just a, a, a good old friend of mine that, believe it or not, we used to attend bar together at Sweeney's on Main Street so many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we started to be friends. And uh, at the same time, he decided that he was going to be running for City Council uh, at the same time in 1989 when I ran for Council of Ward 5, and, and I was unsuccessful. Uh, John was elected, and I still followed, naturally would follow the process because the following few years later, I became the school committee member again, and John was still the city councilor. But in that, when I said that I was going to run for 
Council of Ward 3, which is the ward he represented for 10 years, because I had moved to Ward 3, he indicated to me, he says, I, I think and I wish you'd wait just one extra year before you do that, because I'm not too sure if, if people may know who you are in this particular area. And I thought about it and, and I said, well, John, I'm gonna disagree a little bit. He says, that's okay, that's okay, but you're gonna go out and work. And I did, I worked hard for it. I've been the council for 16 years. John's still a resident in my ward. Uh, he and his lovely late wife, Jan, uh, were always there to help and aid me through the process of, of what it was like to be a counselor, a ward counselor. And because of that, I think that uh, his expertise to me is very, very important to have for these next five months because as some others have said, he knows the process, he knows how the politics works. Um, yeah, we do need some new people and we're gonna probably see new people in these next few years. Some of us old timers, as I refer to myself now as, won't, won't be here forever. But with that being said, um, my vote has to go this evening for uh, the former Ward 3 City Councilor, John McGeary. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Madam Clerk. Darren Court. Uh, thank you. Um, well, my vote will go to Ollie Spears, and I'm gonna make a few statements in regard to why, you know, I'm voting for Ollie. Uh, I've known Ollie for a while right now, and I think that, you know, uh, some of you do know that I'm the kind of guy that do have a backbone, and I think Ollie Spears does have a backbone too. And I think we are uh, at a crossroad in this city where we definitely need some uh, drastic change in regard to uh, how we go about politics in the sense of doing what we think is best for the city, and obviously, uh, you know, I'm so glad given the fact that I do have an opportunity to speak about this as somebody that represents the entire city. And I think that, you know, when it's come down to, you know, the group of people that we have in the city, people got to be able to see that there's a reflection in regard to what we do as government. And I think, you know, with all the respect to all nine of you, I mean, obviously you are qualified, if not overqualified, you know, in regard to this job. But one of the things that I do know is that, you know, this job is not a joke and it's very complex and sometimes uh, it does require time to understand the culture and also the responsibility about what you are doing. And of course, you know, I'm the guy as we speak that has a lot of people coming after me solely for saying my views. And I think all this space is not different as that. And uh, for the past, uh, you know, eight years I've been in this country, I've known Ollie for uh, pretty much all of it. And I think that, you know, as a young person myself, you know, all this peers, you know, has been giving me a lot of reason to hope and a lot of reason to expect things, but also not sitting down and people give it to you. And I think uh, it truly shows his ability not only to speak his mind, but also to do what he promised to do. And I think tonight, you know, we do have an opportunity to select one person. And I think that person will be able to serve for the next four months. And in regard to, you know, what we have, especially as the president stated, you know, Moses, Mr. Mayor, Moses Rodriguez, you know, has been doing a wonderful job. And I think that I would like to see somebody who can actually carry that path. And, I am pretty confident, if not sure, that all his peers does have the qualifications and also the ability, and not only that, but the experience in terms of like the knowledge about Brockton as a whole. And with that being said, I think that you know it would be very painful and pleasant not to support not only someone that I know, but someone that I do know will be able to do a job according to my understanding. So with that being said, my vote will go to uh, Mr. Spears. Thank you, Councillor. Madam Clerk, please. Cruz. Uh, not to uh, belabor the fact, um, w this is a, a great field. All he's done so much in this city. Attorney Hassan would bring a, a business background that this board could use more of. Attorney Noonan uh, has, has done so many great things in the city. But this is a five-month term. We, we aren't leading into a two-year term. We'll be, we'll be setting the tax rate before you know it. The experience that Mr. McGarry brings with him in my opinion, has to overshadow all that these other people have done, and they are all wonderful people, and again, I really mean, I hope they all stay part of the process, but I'm gonna be voting for John McGarry. Thank you, Councilor. Madam Clerk. Beauregard. Thank you. Uh, I am going with uh, Joanne Zygmunt um, this evening, because one of the things she said is, you know, her experience, I'm um, big on empowerment, and I like the idea of more youthful empowerment, because um, after all, they are the future. And um, I uh, was very excited about her experience in serving throughout the county, and informing, educating, and being involved, understanding Robert's rules, and being available, 
available is a huge part of this position. Um, again, this, there was remarkable people this evening. I made um, that statement earlier. This was sort of like going to Gowell's. Um, there's so many good things, you're not sure which to choose. And, um, but again, that's no surprise because this is Brockton. And I, and I just um, hope that when people leave tonight, this is what you're going to talk about. The fact that there were so many great people to select, it was such a challenge. Not that you had no choice, that you had so many great choices. So yes, I will um, vote, cast my vote for Joanne Zygmunt. Thank, Thank point you, of, Councilor. Point of information of the Councilor from Ward 5, Gowles is also in Ward 6? Yes, I'm aware of that. <laughs> duly noted, duly noted, Councilor. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please. ASAP. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody. I think I'm honored to be in the room with all of you. You're all amazing people, and Brockton's lucky to have all of you. Um, there are some cities and towns that can't get anybody to run for elected office, and we're always, uh, we exceed numbers. I've worked with all of you. I've worked with, not only did, have I seen Mr. Jeff Charnell in action, but uh, on some of our boards, but he's also one of my constituents. I've worked with Ollie closely since my first day, since before I got onto the city council throughout the city. I've gotten to know Joanne Zygmunt over the past few years, and uh, Mr. Bernie Hassan, I can't even say enough about him. I've known you know, what he's done in the city of Brockton for many years. and. Um, I've met some, um, David uh, Sylvester, I, I know that he's, um, I've gotten to know him with all his dedication to our community, and tonight I met a few new candidates that I can't wait to see what, you, what you're doing and what you continue to do for our city. So I'm proud that um, this, we had the opportunity to meet all the new people and get some of the people that have been dedicating their time to the city of Brockton. So I'm proud that, to, I can't wait to have conversations with some of you after this. So. Um, and I have to share with you that it's very good to be the last vote. <laughs> this is a rare occasion and that's why I asked it, but um, my vote is going to go to John McGarry because I feel that um, this job, as everybody knows, uh, you, you can't be prepared for it, there's no training, and um, it's only five months. And so whoever gets into the seat has to get in and get going, but um, if I could have voted for all of you right now, I would have, but, um, but I, I thank you. So my vote goes to Mr. McGarry. All these got two, so it should be a total of 10 votes. Thank you, Councillor. Again, thank you for everybody's uh, involvement in this, and again, on behalf of the City Council, thank you. Um, with that being said, that was the first round, and Madam Clerk, if you could please calculate. We need to take the top two candidates voted on. So there were seven votes for John McGarry, two votes for Ollie Spears, and one vote for Joanne Zygmunt. So our two um, with the most vote getters would be John McGarry and Ollie Spears. Councilors, we will now um, entertain uh, a vote. We'll do a ballot vote. It will be uh, a roll call vote. Councilor Isaac, you want to do it from the bottom again? Well, this time's fine. Thank you. What's that? <laughs> yeah. I'll take back the first one. No, I'm going to take a motion to do a roll call from <laughs> the bottom. I'll second it then. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. We'll do that. We'll stay uniform throughout. Um, oh, oh. But with that being said, the two entities are Mr. John McGarry and Mr. Ollie Spears. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I stand corrected. By all means. Um, We'll have Mr. McGarry followed by Mr. Spears on the, uh, on the actual listing. Mr. McGarry, do you choose to come back before us and address the council? Councilors, first I want to, I want to thank you for the first round of voting. I'm, I'm humbled. Um, I hope that if, if, this, if, I, if by chance I prevail in the, in the second round, um, I look forward to serving with everyone. But it's a great honor. Those that, that, are you, that are here now know what an honor it is to serve the citizens of Brockton. And it would truly be an honor for me for the next four and a half, five months to come back to something that I truly loved for the 10 years that I did it. Um, I, I, as I stated in my earlier comments, um, the process is, is something I'm um, intimately familiar with, um, and, and I'm still involved in the city. I, as you can know by my appearance, that come December you'll all be seeing me wear, wearing my red suit around. Um, I'm not going anywhere. Um, 
but I would, would truly cherish a chance to serve with you and to serve the citizens of Brockton for the next five months. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGarry. Thank you. Mr. Spears, please. I just want to say a couple words. You know, when people put their names in for this position, they're hoping for change. They're not hoping to go backwards. Mm. You know, when people come from their homes to see what's coming, what's going on with the city, they want change. They don't want the same old thing that happened 10 years ago. I'm not saying that you're old, I apologize. Sir. <laughs> but people are expecting change. And I know with myself, when you got elected, you had to start somewhere. You guys, you guys don't have a degree in city council. You started somewhere when you're elected. You're like, you know what? You learn. I'm a fast learner. I'm flexible in time. And I believe I need to be in that seat. We need to move Brockton forward. It's time for change. And I'm that change. All right? Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Again, we do want to thank both Mr. Spears, Mr. McGarry, and the other six individuals, uh, actually seven individuals that applied. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what democracy is all about, so thank you. Um, with that being said, uh, we need to take a final vote, please. Sullivan. Uh, McGarry, please. McCastro. McGarry. Monaghan. McGarry. Lally. McGarry. Farwell. Spears. Ian Erie. McGarry. Darren Court. Spears. Cruz? Uh, McGarry. Beauregard? Spears. ASAC? McGarry. So that's seven for John McGarry and three for Ollie Spears. So the election, the election has been finalized uh, with a valid vote. Um, the council President should state that uh, Mr. John McGarry from Ward 3 has been elected to fill the remainder of the unexpired term of Council at Large, now Mayor Moises Rodriguez as a concert lodge within the city of Brockton. Any other matters before us tonight, councilors? Does he get sworn in? He does not get sworn in tonight. He has to go see the clerk, oh, councilor. Okay. Okay. Much like the school committee member has to go see the clerk. Okay. Right. Anything else before us tonight? Well, sure, adjourn. Thank you very Thank much. You. This motion is properly seconded. We're adjourned. Thank you.